I Smell Red Song Bird, the Michelle Bird Song in New York City. I just left Maria Kant's writing group, and I want to talk about that a little bit with you. Some of the people who were in the writing group I happen to have photographs of. That's Michael Raker. He was in the writing group. He was Carlos Castaneda in a previous life. This is Judy Redinger. She was in the writing group today. She was Eleanor Roosevelt in a previous life. This is Bill Leader. He was St. Philip, uh, Jesus Christ disciple in a previous life. He was in the writing group today. Milton Harris was John Milton who wrote Paradise Lost. And he was Homer who wrote the Iliad and Odyssey. He was my father in a previous life. He was in the writing group today. Velma was in the writing group today. Raphael was in the writing group today. Raphael was Charlton Heston in a previous life. And he was a painter, Raphael. So, and this is me when, uh, with my business partner, Jay Chen, who was my husband in the, during the Ming Dynasty. That's my book, which I co-wrote with a uh, Robin Birdsong. I sneezed at the greasy babysits Abigail. I'm coming to you from the St. Francis of Assisi Residence 3. Robin Birdsong was St. Francis of Assisi. This is a t-shirt that uh, Jay and I made t-shirts together. Okay, so what I want to talk about today is uh, Emily Dickinson's poem. I was Emily Dickinson in a previous life. I was also Socrates and Shakespeare. The name of the poem was, I'm Nobody, Who Are You? And this is what I wrote about it. The, the assignment in the writing group was to write about the poem. Anything that comes to mind is her rule. Maria Kant's rule, the teacher. She was Mary McLeod Bethune, an American black, edu a black American educator. And she's an excellent teacher, so intuitive. And skilled. She was trained in Russia. They have a really good education system in Russia. How perfectly normal that this poem I should see because in a past life I relate. No, in a past life she was me. I relate to how she writes being part her. I write the same. If you don't like her style, why I guess I must take the blame. Though I've a new body and a new name, some of her remains in my new brain. This here is a concept of reincarnation, which the power that be, the people who run this world, like the Bilder, uh, Bilderbergers and uh, the Council on Foreign Relations and the Trilateral Commission, they don't let us know about reincarnation, so we're ignorant to that fact. But I happen to be the follower of Gurinder Singh, who is a spiritual teacher and who teaches about um, the deeper, deeper things like reincarnation. Now, answer to the question. Number one, she's talking to one eye at first, then to her other eye. That's why she writes, there's a pair of us. She lives in an intolerant, narrow-minded world, quick to call a genius crazy. That's why she tells herself, her eye, her sense of self, don't tell, they'd banish, you know. Okay? Uh, Emily Dickinson is an imaginative author, being a nobody. She imagines, which remembers, the imaginative state is a state of the spirit. Let me say it again. The imagination is a state of the spiritual world. She was somebody in her past life. That's why she knows what it's like, because she writes that, uh, it's dreary to be somebody, and she only knows that because she's been somebody before in a past life. Emily Dickinson writes, How dreary to be somebody, because when she was famous, life felt dreary. Having to confirm her ID all day to the uh, questions, Are you Socrates? Yes. Are you Shakespeare? Yes, I am. Are you Mark, Are you Robert Frost, Mark Twain, 
yes, yes, and on and on down to her present life where no one believes she lives in the land state of the unbelievers. unbelievers. Though a half-blind person could see she's clearly pregnant because she's 73, they say that's not a possibility. She explains it's an immaculate conception, a boon from the Lord. He loves the world. Her babies are his manifestations. Either you believe in Jesus Christ and his ability to make his own rules, his ability to create twins in an older lady's room in a believer's womb, or you believe in Satan, who can only mimic, can create nothing new, can create only what eventually leads to boo-hoo. How boring is life under Satan's rule? You give us nothing new out of the blue. Are you a believer or a non? Like the lady asks, who are you? A visionary or a fool? Okay, that's what I want to tell you. Okay, let me say goodbye to the writing group. That's Raphael, Velma, Michelle, Bill Leader, Michael Raker, Milton Harris, and let's see who else was there. Andre was there, the coal miner. Um, Charlene Kelk was there, my mother in a previous life. I have her picture. Let me just show it. Charlene Kelk. There she is. She, she doesn't write, but she comments on in her own positive, loving manner. She adds to our group. Orlando Rodriguez, who was or, uh, Orville Wright and Orville Redenbacher, was there talking about being a nobody. And um, I need to say about being a nobody, if you want to be somebody, think of an idea Think of how you can help a lot of people and uh, believe you can be a somebody, first of all. Because Orlando admitted he complains about being a nobody, but he never decided to be a somebody. Being a somebody is a decision, like everything else. And uh, so that's it. Think of uh, uh, a way to help a number of people, and then you'll be a somebody. Okay, that's my old red songbird. I know I'm going to think of more things to say once I get off this video, but then I'll just make another video and say it then. <laughs> okay, it's my old red songbird, the Michelle Bird song in New York City. I hope you've been helped by this video to have some insight into yourself. Oh, that's what I meant to say. In order to be somebody, you have to know yourself. You have, like Socrates said, know thyself. Get to know yourselves because you've been more than one person. Get to know the people you are. You can do this through talk and share therapy and meditation, guided meditation, because meditation could be dangerous on your own. So you get a teacher or spiritual leader. Okay, so there you go. Talk to you next time. So long.